Greetings to my regular viewers here on the HDEF doing the last couple of changes. Oh, that'll work. I don't get no prettier. As a matter of fact, I guess I continue to get uglier. Greetings, unsettled souls. Man, another one to be unsettled about, too. Rush Limbaugh has passed. Now, I don't care if I get a bit of hate for what I'm going to say, but I, I do ask this. I ask that people listen to what it is that I am saying before they judge what was said. Is that fair enough? Can we do that? Once again, listener supported the correct views, hotmail.com, the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Going to get into all of the, uh, the Fukushima stuff. I've got notes down here. Not lots of Fukushima stuff, but I want to get to some stuff about, about the passing of Rush Limbaugh. Even if you hate him, I'm going to say some things that I think are universally true here. One of them is that I wouldn't be doing what I was doing if it wasn't for him. Now, I would say the same would probably be true <clears throat> of Alex Jones and some others. But the inflection of Rush and the way that he spoke. Now, again. I didn't like the man. I haven't even talked about his views, so hush. Hush! I have, as you can tell, a very distinct way of speaking. And I had a habit as a child of speaking incredibly fast. And uh, I got into extemporaneous speech. Um... I was on the debate team, different things like that. Started a radio show. Well, how, did, how did all this happen? How did the internet show and all this begin? I would study the cadence of certain, certain speakers. Kurt Loder, Rush Limbaugh, people who spoke very well. And as I was doing so, at first when I was a child, my, my dad had told me what a terrible person Rush Limbaugh was, and I remember thinking how strange that is, because Rush sounded a lot like Reagan, and uh, Bush had, of course, let us all down terribly. I remember uh, my dad saying that he would like to see Colin Powell run, but that he was worried that Colin Powell would be killed for the color of his skin. But then he told me about this dangerous person called Rush Limbaugh. And this was something I believed. When my first wife and I got a place over on Spring Avenue, the landlord was listening to Rush Limbaugh. And I had told her that I was second guessing whether or not I wanted to live there. Well, fast forward to uh, the mid 90s and I began driving taxi. And as any driver will let you know, it is impossible to listen to terrestrial radio. Doesn't matter what kind of music you like, you're going to hear the same five, six, seven boring songs over and over and over again. So I began to listen to talk radio, and I wanted to hear what this Rush Limbaugh guy was all about. It's a common story with Rush. Once I began to listen, I realized that a lot of what was said about him was entirely untrue. Uh, he did say jokes, like one of the jokes I read that people were offended about today. He said, I love the women's movement, particularly when I'm behind them. If that offends you, then there's something wrong with you. How'd you ever make it out of the third grade? Really? What is wrong with you? Did you die the first time you watched South Park? Did you ever see a Mel Brooks movie? Have you ever been to a stand-up comedy show? Anything like that. So, especially when I began to listen to what he was saying about Clinton, I began to see that my friend Mike Dabb, rest in peace Mike Dabb, was uh, also, uh, was also into uh, 
a lot of what Rush was saying and was pointing out things that when I listened to them, he was right. I remember once he said, and I'll listen to this, we'll get to all the Fukushima stuff, I promise. I remember once he said that there was an image floating, this is very interesting, an image floating around that the Clintons were angry about. And Rush Limbaugh could not figure out for the life of him why they'd be upset by this. It was Bill and Hillary <clears throat> apparently dancing as they held each other on the beach. Rush said, no, 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 no. There's something more here. This is staged. And then they are also making it look like they're outraged, like the, the privacy was breached by this photographer to make sure that more people saw the picture. They look it up out of, out of interest. Uh, you know. He said, uh, this is the kind of picture you would normally want out there. And he thought that they did want it out there. And wouldn't you know, mere weeks later, we all learned who Monica Lewinsky was. That's the kind of insight that turned me on to him. I told my dad long before the internet, I said, I've heard people call the show. And they'll mention some obscure politician from, you know, 1960 or something. And Rush Limbaugh will immediately start spouting out facts about that person. And this was prior to the internet. So no, don't, don't tell me that it was the internet because it wasn't there wasn't there was no internet that's how i know um brilliant mind brilliant brilliant mind and at the end of his life as i fade this little thing away here at the end of his life he was leaving a message and he said you know and this was christmas he said uh i won't always be able to do this but know that I'll want to. And then he talked about how lucky he was. And he felt like a friend to all of us who listened. If you didn't listen, then just skip ahead, skip ahead. The Fukushima stuff is coming. But he was like a friend to us. And uh, even Christelle, who was on the show, she's more familiar with Alex than Rush because we would watch videos and whatnot. But she wasn't usually in situations where I was when Rush was on from the noon to three hour which is going to be a hopeless void now I hope, I, hope, I hope Mark Stein gets it but anyway Michael Savage but when he was dying he talked about how incredibly lucky he was and I think that's a wake up call for a lot of us whether you liked the man or didn't He gave his life for his job. He literally worked when he could have done anything to the end of his life. But he said that he was lucky because of how much his wife loved him. How much everybody loved him. And he said he felt like he was the luckiest man alive and he understood what Lou Gehrig meant when he said the same thing, which cost him the disease. Why would somebody call me now? when someone had cost him the disease. So...